songs that went along with what I'm going to talk about today. And I think for me, I came from a technical background. I came from information technology, and everything I do is cut and dry, and then everything is black and white. And then I hooked up with that pretty young lady that came walking by, and she showed me what real love is about, and what happens when we love people. And then I think about what God did. I mean, God gave his one and only son. He gave his one and only begotten son to die for us. He said, here, I only have one son, but he gave him to us to die for us, for our sins. And then there's other people in the Bible, like Abraham. He was going to kill his son because of his love for God. He had that much love for God that that was what he was going to do. And that's an incredible amount of love. And I found in my work, as most of you know, um, we have a nonprofit, and we work with a lot of different people. And what I found is it's all about love, and it's all about loving people. One of the other things that I did, I said I like numbers, is I looked up hate in the Bible. Keep in mind, in the New International Version, love is mentioned over 551 times. In the New International Version, hate is in there 80 times. If that gives you any idea of the importance of love and the importance of loving people, everyone has love inside of them. God is giving us love. He's given us an enormous amount of love. You all have seen so much, and you all have been so, through so much. You've seen hate in the world, but you've also seen love. You've also seen unconditional love. I'm still learning. I'm still learning about all of that. We all show it differently. Um, we all show our love differently than others, but what would happen if we all loved? What would happen if we all loved instead of saying, well, look at what that person did to me. And, and why am I worried about that and talking bad about other people? Are we really loving them? And I was reading Henry Drummond's book, and in Henry Drummond's book, it's called The Greatest Thing in the World. I was told to read that book and when I picked it up, I wasn't sure what was the greatest thing in the world. I thought it was just going to be another fiction book or something that, okay, this is what this person says. But what he honestly believed in that book was that love is the greatest thing in the world. And that's what I'm here to talk to about today and talk about the scriptures and how scripturally. Let's take a look at what happened in the scriptures and the love that was shared in the scriptures. And in his book, he talked about what it would be like if, every, if everyone loved. And one of the things that he pointed out is that love is like an exercise. You have to keep doing it. What he said to quote him is, if a man does not exercise his arm, he develops no biceps muscle. And if a man does not exercise his soul, he acquires no muscle in his soul, no strength of character, no vigor of moral fiber, nor beauty of spiritual growth. Love is not a thing of enthusiastic emotion. It's a rich, strong, manly, vigorous expression of a well-rounded Christian character. the Christ-like nature in its fullest development, and the constituents of this great character are only to be built up by ceaseless practice. And that's one, one of the things that I've learned, is that I have to love people. And what I've also found is it's, it's okay to love someone who's a sinner. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. You can still love someone that it maybe has bad morals. Maybe they've had something go wrong with them in their life that we have no idea what it is. We met with a couple, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we took them on a trip. And what they had done a trip, for them it's a long trip, but we went to Waterloo and back. 
and they were talking about these kids that they had found. The kids didn't have a home. There were three of them. And they brought these kids into their home. Didn't even know them. But boy, they are loving on those kids. Those kids have some issues. And they're loving on them. And they're taking care of them. And I'm like, wow, how can you guys do this? You didn't even know who they were. But they did that because they have the love of God. The other thing is, is think about the other things that happen. What about someone when someone cuts you off in traffic? You want to give them a hand signal, don't you? You want to tell them how you feel. But what if maybe they cut you off because their wife is in the back seat giving birth? Or what happens if maybe there's something else? Maybe they just got notified that their mother and father were in a car accident, which we loved on a couple of people that that happened to about two months ago. They were out over by Mondain, Iowa, and they came around, they were driving in there on their side of the road, and someone came around uh, a semi and hit them head on. And it's like to get that phone call and to know maybe that person cut them off in traffic. And, um, you know, what about a person that made a bad decision? We all make bad decisions. But you know what I found? It's always nice to know that somebody's there to love me. Somebody's there to care about me. In worst case, God is there for us. Because God loves us no matter what. Even when we sin, even when we do something wrong. Guess what? That's why God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, is to die for our sins. Once and for all. To have it all taken care of. And that's what he did. And in the Bible, what it said is, is why, do you, why remember what God has forgotten? God doesn't remember what we did when we were kids. He's already forgiven us for that. But for some reason, we want to keep bringing that up. We want to keep thinking about that. So we have to love ourselves also in what we're doing. In um, 1 John 4, 7, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God, because God is love. That's who he is. He loves us no matter what. He doesn't say, I'll love you if you do this for me, or I'll love you if you do that. He's always there, and he always loves us. I've seen people transform. I've seen people living the worst life. And they get transformed. God never left them. God was always there for them. I'm going to keep going in John 4. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. To go on, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love has made us complete by him living in us. And God lives in each and every one of us. And you know, I sometimes wonder, maybe the more we love, the more we show God. The more we show others God. One of the things that's been happening the last couple of weeks, the one thing that we've been seeing and that keeps coming up as a common thing is constantly be preaching to other people. Wherever you go, constantly be preaching but only use words when necessary. People see you. They see how you live. They see how you are. They see how you act around other people. What if they see your love for someone else and they go, wow, that's cool. Look at what that person has. Look at what that person is sharing. Last night, we were dead tired. Ruth and I was dead tired. We did a funeral in the morning. The day before, we had brought two churches together to talk. 
we had just yesterday had just about we sat down and we almost fell asleep. But what we had done earlier in the week is there's people that we go and visit, people that may not be able to get out. And so we went and um, we're both tired. We could have put it off. But what Ruth did was she called them earlier in the week to set up the appointment with them and say, hey, we'd like to come over and I'll tell you what, why don't we bring you dinner? Why don't, let's sit down and let's have dinner together. And she said, when? And we said, Saturday night. This person's husband has a chronic illness. We're talking they're in their 60s. I mean, they may not even be 60 yet. Their husband has a chronic illness. They can't go to a restaurant. What we found out was Saturday night was their 45th wedding anniversary. We didn't know that. We had no idea. But what we did was we followed what God said, and God wanted us to be there. And that was our way of showing love to them. And she said, had we not gone there, their 45th wedding anniversary would have been just like every other day. We were able to make it different just by showing love. And it was one of the greatest feelings I think we ever had by doing that. So I'm going to throw something. Well, what I've also found is, is it's not our job to judge people, like the person cutting us off in traffic. Oh, what's wrong with him? Doesn't he know how to drive? That's what God and the Holy Spirit does is they judge people. And they will convict them whenever the time is right. That's not our job to do. And what I found is that's such a freeing way to live. You love the person for who they are, not what they're doing. And I wanna, I'm going to throw something else out that Henry Drummond brought up. And what, it, what it's called is it's called the summum bonum. It's a Greek word, and it means the, the supreme good. What is the supreme good? And what I see is the Bible supports what the supreme good is. One of the things is, is we've been told that the greatest thing in the world, in, in, especially in the religious world, is faith. We keep thinking, or we've been told our whole lives, that faith is the, is the most supreme thing that happens. But that great word has been the keynote for centuries. It's been what people have talked about for centuries. And we've easily looked upon it as the greatest thing in the world. But what if we were wrong? What if the greatest thing in the world is actually love? So let me read you from Matthew 22:36. Hearing that Jesus has silenced the Sadducees, had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. He had already talked to the Sadducees. He had already satisfied whatever question that they had asked. One of them, an expert in the law. So keep in mind the law. Okay, because I'm going to talk about that a little bit also. He said, tested him with this question. And if Jesus didn't love them, he could have, he could have just, I think he could have just ripped them apart right there, but he didn't. Anyway, he tested them with this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Okay, so commandments are laws. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And what he started with is love. Love the Lord. And the second is very similar to it, which is love your neighbors as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. So, so is the supreme good, the sum of bonum, is it love? I believe it is. Paul said, if I have all the faith in the world so that I can move mountains and not have love, I am nothing. Doesn't matter what I can do. All these great things that I can do, if I don't have love, I really don't have anything. I don't have anything to share. I don't have anything to give everybody else. So in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he singled out love as the summum bonum. 
This is a, it, there are masterpieces of Christianity. The Gospels are masterpieces. And um, they're agreed about what Peter says. And in Peter 4, 8, he says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. And then in John 4, 16, and I can go on and on about the, how the Bible talks about love. John, Keep in mind, John, and one of the things that I read about that I hadn't thought about, John was the only disciple that laid his head on Jesus' chest. And he heard the heartbeat of love. He heard the heartbeat of our Savior. He heard him breathe. And he's the only one in the Bible that did that. And John is the one that Jesus loved. So John is talking about this in 1 John. Chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the, on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. This is how, how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There's no fear in love but perfect love drives fear away because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You know, and the other thing that I was thinking about, and Henry Drummond also talks about, is if we love, there may not be a need for the Ten Commandments, right? Because if you love, you'll unconsciously fill the entire law. You'll fulfill the, the word of the law. How about those shalt have, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because if a man loves God, you won't have to tell him that. Because he loves God, why would he have any other gods? Take not his name in vain. Would you ever dream of taking someone's name in vain if we love them? and we cared about them, we just wouldn't do those things. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. This is one of them that I like. Because if we loved, shouldn't we be too glad to have one day in seven to dedicate more exclusively to the object of our affection? One day out of the week, if we loved him. So the last thing that I want to leave you with and for me, this really sums it up. This is 1 Corinthians 13. This is Paul's letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I, give, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I don't have love, I gain nothing from that. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. And it always perseveres. That's what I see in you all. That's what I see in your eyes. And when I come in here, I see that love. And I see that love that you all have for each other. Especially with you two, how much you guys love each other. 60 some odd years together? Wow. Love to go on? Verse 8, love never fails. It's always there. Think about our parents. No matter what, they were always there for us. It didn't matter how much bad we did. We came home, our parents were there to give us a hug. Depending on your parents, it may be a few days after you got home, but they were still always there for us. And the very last, 
and now these three remain. This is where Paul finished this up. These three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Greater than faith. It's greater than hope. Love is the greatest of all things. It's what I believe is the sum of both. It is the supreme good. And that's what I wanted to leave you all with today. And that's what I wanted to share with you. It's just love and what God's word has to say about love. So as you go out this week, take a look at what you're doing. In your relationships with other people, are you sharing love with them? Are you loving them for who they are? Not what they look like, not where they come from, not what they just did. But are we still loving them? Okay. You ready to sing another song? <laughs> Come on, guys. Did I put everybody to sleep? Holy moly. Okay. I got I got a good one. The very last page. Did we sing the second song? We didn't sing the second song, did we? Oh, we got to sing the last. We're going to sing the second song. It looks like this. It's this color. Well, for some people, it's your second one. Second page. Second page. Thank you. I love to tell the story. Yes, I love to tell the story. Uh huh.